Today, fam, I'm going to be reviewing a video from a young content creator named Julie. Now, Julie, she's new on the scene, and her channel is really taking off. My God. She focuses on being a biblical feminine wife, and I have to say that she's doing an outstanding job. Her content is packed with valuable nuggets of wisdom for women and men like myself on what it means to embody being a godly feminine wife. If a wife does not submit to her husband's leadership, she becomes a stumbling block. She makes it harder for her husband to live out his God-given role. I am Julie. I've been married for longer than a decade. I'm a mama to my beautiful four-year-old son, a joyful homemaker, and I have a passion for helping and encouraging wives in the marriages. But above all, I am a daughter of God. I just love speaking about the role of a biblical wife, perhaps because it brings me so much joy to live out this role myself. It is an incredible blessing to embrace and embody the identity that God has given us as wives. When we live in alignment with God's design, we experience a deeper sense of purpose and fulfillment. This is why I am so passionate about sharing my understanding of what it means to be a wife according to the Word of God. I'd like to invite you to my free class, How to Create a Joyful Marriage. This class explores how self-reflection and embracing your God-given femininity can help you build a deeper connection with your husband. I'll be sharing key points to guide you in creating a joyful and fulfilling marriage. If this resonates with you, check the link in the video description. The first role of a wife is to be a helpmate to her husband. In Genesis 2 verse 18, we read, The Lord God said, It is not good for man to be alone. I will make a helper suitable for him. Here we see that we are called to be our husband's helpers. What I really liked about her channel is not only was she talking about what it means to be a helpmeet or a godly wife she's showing you in her videos. She is literally going through her daily routine on what it means to be a godly wife. I mean, she's going step by step by step. So she shows you how to be that type of woman she's talking about. She's not pointing fingers. She is not uh, bringing up what ethnic group you're from. She's just simply being what the Word of God says to be, <laughs> right? And I thought that was pretty cool. And it got me thinking as a husband, it's like, you know what? I have a great marriage, right? But with some of her other videos, I saw some things in myself that, maybe I can do better to bring out certain qualities in my wife, you know, because her content is for, is for women, but I found it useful because it's like, I started thinking, what can I do to bring out some more of this type of stuff that this lady is doing for her husband? Now, my wife is already a wonderful woman, already a wonderful help me, but watching her content makes me want to be a better husband to get more of this. And I think that every woman should aspire to have some resemblance of what she's talking about because not everyone's situation is going to be the same. Uh, she's in a unique situation. I think she's from South Africa. So things are a little bit different there. But irregardless of if you're a full stay-at-home mom or you work in tandem with your husband, I believe that what she talks about a lot here really goes a long way with whatever situation you're in, if you're willing to do it. Unfortunately, in today's culture, many interpret the role of a helper as inferior. This is a product of human reasoning. Our perspective on this concept is often limited by the world's narrow and misguided understanding. In the body of Christ, no one is inferior or superior. 
the word of God is clear about this and it is crucial that we see God's wisdom rather than relying on human interpretations. So, do not be fooled by human reasoning. In Isaiah 55 verse 8, it teaches us, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, says the Lord God. For my ways are higher than your ways, and my thoughts are higher than your thoughts. God does not think as we do. I thought that was masterful, the way she bought in that scripture, I believe from Isaiah. His, his thoughts are higher than our thoughts, and that's true. Uh, a lot of times what I'm seeing, particularly here in the West, is this going back and forth between the men and the women. Uh, who's the prize? Who's not the prize? Who's more important? Who's not important? I mean, it's just, it's like a jockeying for position, right? It's trying to prove who's better, right? Who deserves to be chased? And and it's a crazy thing. And I like how she dispels a lot of the backwards thinking that a lot of us here in the United States engage in when it comes to these roles of a man and a woman when it comes to marriage. Um, she just clearly goes straight into the Word of God just saying, hey, look, you know, you can't trust man's reasoning. You know, you have to point everything back to the Word of God because his ways and his thoughts are higher than our thoughts. And if we bring it back down to that simplicity, it'll dispel all of these crazy arguments. Now, if you're a person that don't believe in God and maybe you don't believe what the Bible says and I can't really say much for you, and I really don't think her advice is going to help you. I guess people that want to think like that, they're just going to continue in this dysfunction that we see here. But for those who want to elevate and level up and get serious about being a great wife, right, a biblical wife, biblical feminine wife, and those of us who want to be great husbands, that cultivate an environment that can give birth to a feminine wife and uh, allow for a woman that's like that to thrive in our presence, you know, we'll listen to content like that. His ways are infinitely higher than ours. The role of a helper, far from being demeaning, is actually a high calling. In fact, God himself refers to himself as a helper. In Psalm 54 verse 4, we read, Surely God is my help. The Lord is the one who sustains me. If God takes on the role of a helper, how much more of an honor is it for us to be called helpers to our husbands? It is a blessing to serve in the capacity Wow. Again, she she ties these in like a master architect, right? <laughs> How she ties in the, the role that she has in this right perspective. How God is our helper, right? Because without God, without Christ, I can't do anything. I need God's help. As a man that leads my family, I need his help. So if God helps us, and he gives us this woman to be a helper. Ladies, look, it's not a dishonor. It is a great honor because we men need a lot of help in a lot of areas. We we do heavy lifting, but sometimes that finer movements, we just don't have that grace and finesse that you guys bring to the table. So embracing this feminine energy, a biblical feminine energy is essential for any thriving marriage, right? If you're thinking marriage, I'm not talking about hookup culture, baby mama culture, all of that is birthed out of dysfunction, but I'm talking about getting into a relationship that leads to marriage and building this godly institution that just breathes out harmony. And it's never too late to start. It is never too late to start at all because it is an opportunity for us to become more holy, more like Christ. 
Jesus himself taught us about the beauty of servanthood and by being helpers to our husbands, we are living out that same servanthood. This process of helping and serving makes us more Christ-like and that is an incredible blessing. Every day in our marriages, we have the chance to live out the calling God has given us. We are not just functioning as helpers in the mundane tasks of life. We are actively participating in the holy role God has ordained for us. The second role of a wife is to live in submission with her husband. The concept of submission can be challenging for many people. They often wonder what the submission should look like, and the Bible is quite clear. In Ephesians 5 verse 22, we read, Wives, submit yourself to your own husbands as you do to the Lord. This verse is often debated, but its message is straightforward. I want you to pause this video after my question and think about the answer first. How do you submit to God? This is how you are called to submit to your husband. Just as we trust God to lead us, we must allow our husbands and trust our husbands to lead us. Let go of control and let your husband take the lead as God has intended for him to do. Wow. Again, how she ties this together. Now, I must say, this woman spends time in the Word of God. She spends time in prayer. I'm not saying her marriage is perfect because all we have is what she's showing us. And I'm sure that throughout the the tenure of her marriage, they've had challenges. Everyone does, okay? And if a person says they never had a challenge in their marriage, they're lying between their teeth. Everybody goes through ups, downs, disappointments, you know, uh, stages where maybe you're not happy with one another. But when she talks about submission, this was one of the best ways I heard from a woman's perspective describing this. She gave a call to action to ladies that would be watching this video, think about how you submit to God. Just pause the video. When you think about it, think about it. And then when you find out how you submit yourself to God, if you call yourself a Christian, if you believe that, then that's how you should submit to your husband. Because God called us as men, those that take up the role of being a husband, to be the man of our home, to lead our homes and for our wives to follow us. Now, here's the thing. They have to follow us as we follow Christ, right? Because Christ is the head of man. He's our head, okay? Wherever Christ looks, we look, and wherever we look, our wives follow us. Our wives, our children, everyone follow us. So if, if we are men that are not being led by Christ, then we can lead our families astray. We can leave them we can lead them off course, okay? Ephesians 5 verse 23 goes on to explain, for husbands is the head of the wife, as Christ is the head of the church, his body of which he is the savior. In the same way that we are the body of Christ and submit to God's leadership, we are called to submit to our husbands, who are the heads of their wives. If we do not allow God to lead us, he will not force himself on us. Similarly, if we resist our husband's leadership, they cannot fulfill the role God has given them. I emphasize this not because God cannot lead us if we resist, but because He won't. God has given us free will. If we constantly take matters in our own hands and fail to submit to God, we block God's guidance in our lives. This dynamic applies to marriage. If a wife does not submit to her husband's leadership, she becomes a stumbling block. By resisting, she makes it hard for her husband to live out his God-given role. 
picture a husband as the head and the wife as the body. If the body refuses to follow, the head has nothing to lead. That's why I believe submission is vital. It is so important. It empowers your husband to fulfill his role. Again, I say, do not be a stumbling block to your husband. Trust his leadership. Remember, God is the head of your husband. God is still in control through your husband's leadership. Put your trust in God. Pray that God will guide your husband and let him lead, trusting that God is guiding him. Wow. <laughs> what a way to end that video. You know, trust your husband, right? Trust in his leadership. You know, God is a gentleman. He's not going to force us to follow him. He doesn't. He doesn't force mankind to follow him at all. But what happens to those of us, especially those that call themselves Christians, when we refuse to allow for God to lead us, that's when we get into a lot of trouble. That's when we start running into uncertainties and having a lot of uh, stumbling blocks in our way, right? And how she say that you don't want to become a stumbling block for your husband. You don't want to constantly be fighting and wrestling with your husband, always bucking him. Now, I know there are some ladies that are in some bad situations where they're married to someone and maybe his leadership is cruel, you know, and maybe some of you ladies are believers and your husbands aren't believers. And you're like, well, you know, I trust in God, but my husband don't trust in God. I will say this. You need to pray for your husbands, okay? I believe the scripture says that if if you have a unbelieving spouse, pray for them, you know, petition and, and intercede for them to God so that perhaps through your faith, lady, that he will come to Christ. And the same thing for men. If you have an unbelieving wife, we need to pray for them. If they're willing to dwell with us, right, if they're not kicking the head in, fighting, I mean, physically abusing, you know, that's one thing. That's a whole different set of circumstances. But if he's a man, maybe he's an easygoing man and he shows affection, but he just doesn't believe or anything like that. So he doesn't lead with the mind of Christ, but he's willing to dwell with you. It is your responsibility as the wife to pray for him, not nag him to death, okay? Pray and petition God for his soul so that perhaps he will see through your example the love of Christ, okay? And the same thing for you men. We pray over our wives. We wash our wives with the watering of the word so that perhaps if they're unbelieving, they'll be able to come to Christ. And for those that maybe, if they say they believe, but they maybe they're having a tough time with the submission thing, that's what we do. We don't nag. We don't force. We don't say, we the man, woman, you're supposed to follow me. We just move with the mind of Christ, okay? And we be that man of God because either one or two things is going to happen. She's going to line up or she is going to leave and vice versa. And hopefully none of that happens. But anyway, I hope you really enjoyed that piece by Miss Julie. Um, her information is in the description below. I know I've said it a million times, but... I just want to make sure that you guys get that and check her out because she has a lot of wisdom for a young lady. And I've been really enjoying her channel. Her channel is growing big time. And it does me proud to see young people, especially young women, really embracing that role as a helper to their husbands without being begrudged or angry or upset or thinking that their role is less than. She fully embraces that role because she sees the powerful importance in her role. And prayerfully, a lot of you young ladies and some of you women that maybe it ain't like that right now, maybe you could you could see it that way through God's help, okay? Because he is our helper. Just like, like you ladies supposed to be the man's helper, God is your helper too. So I'm going to end it right here. And if you dig this video, give me a thumbs up so that it can help me out that YouTube algorithm. 
subscribe to my channel if you want to see more of my content and you can watch any one of those videos that's up in the corner right there so until the next time i will see you on the next one